Hey there guys, this is Obsidian Chill. Got another video for today. This is a continuation of my in-depth updated guide series, Run to Light. As per usual, in the pinned comment and in the description of the video, you will find timestamps for each relevant section of the guide. So if you're looking for just the single target rotation or the DPS spec or the controller spec, uh, each you'll find that timestamp there so you can skip directly to it rather than watch the entire duration of the video. Uh, as a disclaimer, I do want to say that uh, as light, you will not find a precision section. I'm not going to waste my time, and I'm certainly not going to waste your time by doing a precision section. For one, if you're like a cosplayer, you're doing like a light build, uh, the whole point you'd switch light would be to use the construct abilities. So being precision completely defeats that purpose, uh, because the whole point of the constructs is that you're clipping the constructs with other constructs. And secondly, precision is just brawling or one-handed melee. It's going to be brawling ranged, and it's going to be dual-wield single target. And you're just filling in the blanks with other powers. Uh, light, there are a plethora of other <laughs> power sets out there that are much better options for precision than light. Uh, so you're literally doing yourself a disservice if you're going light precision. And that's why I've never covered it in the light guide, and it, you'll rarely see it on YouTube by anyone else, uh, a precision playstyle for light. Uh, it's just, just don't do it. You don't need to do it, don't do it, it doesn't make sense, and I'm not going to cover it. Let's pick up and get into the video. Okay, so in terms of a DPS spec with light, it's going to be what you'd expect normally for a power set. It's going to be super powered spec, critical attack chance, critical attack damage, might and power. Uh, you have a couple variations here with the melee spec, which is what this is. Uh, with Rip Thrash, Lightweight, you're going to be dead melee the entire time, so more health is more survivability. Uh, with single target, however, since you're going to be max range regardless, health is not going to do you as much benefit. Uh, you're much better off running precision for the weapon taps in between the constructs. Uh, so if you put in some skill points into precision for single target only, uh, you're much better off doing that just for some extra damage because health is, like I said, it's not really going to save you. Iconic Powers or Boss Psychic is a must. Uh, Neon Venom Boost is a must. Sonic Cry is an option. Uh, if you don't have Grim to set up Daze, Daze is very important for Light. Uh, so you can do you can still set up with Entrap, but sometimes people don't like Entrap in terms of it balling adds at lower uh, with zero willpower. So you can run Sonic Cry at that point. Uh, Bloom is not necessary. It's just if you're running, if, if you're not running, if, or sorry, if you're running like an uh, either Gemini type spec where you're running dual supercharges, then you run like Neo Venom Boost and, and Pheromone Bloom just for an EOG uh, double supercharge build. So you can spec that as well, or you can take speed drains up to you, or whatever your flight supercharge is. With super speed, it uh, you don't need to take cyclone pushes just to get drop you down. It, it is very important for light to take these breakout recoveries because light is extremely power heavy. Uh, the contract combos are, are very power intensive, so you want as much power back return as you can. Uh, you're going to need whirling dervish, and you're going to need once again you don't need speed drain, but if you don't want to use bloom with speed drain, you just need a second uh, lower cost supercharge. For weapons, once again, I just have brawling, but uh, ideally with uh, with light for single target, you're going to do the most damage with rifle. Uh, but rifle is not the best for melee because it's slower, it has a slow lunge. I'd rather have something like a fast lunge, like a brawling one handed for melee. But you're not doing any kind of weapon taps or anything you have to worry about for melee range, so don't worry about it. Now, in terms of gear, your weapon, most people run Blast Adapter. I run Replenishing Adapter for Light, like I said before. Light is very power intensive. You're going to see that right away in your in your rotations. Even even like in max gear, uh, max skill points, all the stuff. Even I'm short on power a lot of times, so that's why it's, it becomes an issue. So with the head mod, Supercharged Neo Venom Boost. Your other option is to run Energized Whip Thrash. You may think it's corny and stupid, but it does give you some power return uh, for um, uh, on your melee build. So if you're finding that you're running short on power, take that in your head mod. It's not going to be that giant of a difference. It's, it's more important that you keep up your rotation. If you're struggling for power, you're losing damage regardless. Neck mods give me Escalating Might. Uh, back mod, there's really no back mod that fits light, so you just do Berserker. Uh, chest mod, penetrating strikes. Once again, the biggest difference you can find with light if you're struggling in power is to put power efficiency. So each uh, superpower costs 5% less power. So that's the number one thing. If you find that you're using too much power, you can't sustain your rotation for, it doesn't matter, AOE, single target, ranged, uh, put power efficiency in. 
I, I mean, literally, it's only a two, like literally, like a two percent difference. I already tested this. It's like one point eight seven percent if you don't run pen strength strikes or core strength against your regular damage. So, two percent damage versus struggling you to do your entire rotation that's going to do like millions of damage. Uh, it's you know, it's pretty much a no brainer. So, um, that's the the one recommendation I can make. Uh, leg mod, nothing really scales anymore, so don't worry about it. In terms of trinkets, DPS trinket, orbital, spy drop, and then have a, a combat pet. Face mask and what might legion. Might power is not worth it. It doesn't give you enough power to warrant anything, so you just stick with might. Max damage. Uh, that you need dashing combos. I'll cover that when I when uh, when I touch on the melee rotation. But you have to have dashing combos to cash, uh, cancel rolling dervish. In terms of artifacts, pretty much every single artifact is going to be Trans, Strat, and Grim uh, for light. Uh, Grim sets up days. You don't have to worry about it. So you save a power because uh, it's a tiny bit awkward setting up days as light. Really, you just have like um, uh, Chompers, which is going to panic and suddenly adds flying if there's zero will power. So it's going to be less damage because then you're losing damage on Dervish and, and Whips. Uh, you have uh, Spike Quake, which is a two second cooldown. It's not bad, it's the burst damage. And then you have Entrap, which will ball adds with zero will power. So you definitely don't want that because that'll send them flying and then you can't do damage when they're encased. So Grim is very, very handy with light. Not only is it, is it passive damage, but it also sets up days. Uh, the only really substitution you'd have would be um, Eye of the Gemini if you're running like a supercharged spam build. Uh, that's an option as well, but you don't need solar. Um, Light uses heat vision, which I'll touch on, but it doesn't do the entire heat vision, so really there's no other artifacts that are important. Uh, you'd have some question about using uh, Lamort uh, because you're using Light Blast. Uh, really, Lamort, it's not worth it. Lamort, you get one proc, if it even procs at 35%. If, if, it die, if the target is jumps past 35%, sometimes it doesn't even proc. So you get one proc for Lamort, versus you get four ticks of strategy card damage every single time it hits an ad and crits. So it's just, you'll have infinitely more damage with strategy card overall than you will Lamort. In terms of augments, just might adaptive augments as normal. Might origin augments. Uh, didn't touch on here. The affinity mod bonuses, obviously might and might. The type C and type D mods, nothing really impacts uh like too much type c is helpful for controlling uh type d i find more useful than some of the others but there really there's nothing like game breaking in terms of type c and type d for dps or or, or controlling it's just something that, that helps so let's touch on the next build So in terms of a melee loadup for light, uh, a lot really hasn't changed since the last guide. Uh, I mean, light in general really hasn't changed. Uh, I think the only change that happened, uh, considering from the rotations that I ran before, is that uh, player name of uh, King Chaos uh, added uh, Light Blast to the melee rotation because the finishers are buffed. So from the time where my last light guide happened to now, uh, all finishers in general are buffed. So Light Blast works a little bit different from finisher because it's AOE damage. So it actually uh, was more beneficial to run that. And then he ran um, Heat Vision on the single target uh, rotation instead of my Inspiration clip for the 2% critical buff. So, I mean, that's really all that's really changed in Light in general. But uh, we'll touch on it anyway. So we got Whip Thrash, we got Whirling Dervish, we got Lightweight, Light Blast, Robot Sidekick, and the Event Boost. Now, in terms of how to approach clipping for the station, because this rotation does involve uh, heavy clipping of the, of the constructs. We'll touch on that here. So the principle of it is, uh, we can go this one. It's going to destroy the uh, base items. But um, So for Whip Thrash, if I go here, so if when you hit the power Whip Thrash, as you can see, the tap melee is to do Whip Thrash again. So what that means is that if I hit the power Whip Thrash, if I tap melee, it'll do it again. Actually, we'll take Grim off for this just so it's not uh, being annoying. So that's that's what that means. So if I if I hit the power whip thrash, normally it would just stop. But if I hit it and then tap melee, sorry, I missed the timing because I'm going too slow. As you can see, I just did it again. So that's that's the concept of of uh, hard light being contract based. But in terms of we don't want it, we don't have to see that second animation. So when I do whip thrash, 
when I can tap melee, I can go right into Dervish and cancel it off. So it uh, doesn't show it as cleanly with Dervish. So let me just take another power just uh, as an example here. Uh, we can take like Entrap or something. Actually, no, that's probably going to ball them. So we'll take like Spike Quake. So normally you'd see this, and you'd be again, but what we want to see is whips, and as soon as it comes out, you clip it. So I'm still getting all that damage from the second whip thrash, it's just that it's, it's clips, you don't see it. So that's, that's the concept behind it. Uh, same thing with Dervish. So if I go to Dervish with dashing combos, if I do a tap melee after dash attack, or sorry, after uh, Whirling Dervish, I can cancel that early. So normally with Dervish, you'd have to cancel with like a weapon tap or just let it run. So if this is letting it run, this is if I cancel with like a weapon tap. But if you cancel it with dashing combos, as you can see, I get an AOE hit of damage after, dash, uh, after Dervish. So I can cancel Dervish any single time as soon as it's active. I can let it run for a bit, and then do dashing combos. So that's that's with that clip. And the reason why you want to cancel Dervish is that it's not necessary to hold Dervish the entire animation. It's vulnerable to block, so really it's putting you more at a higher risk as well. So really, the maximized Dervish, you're only doing it for three or four ticks anyway. And then with Lightweight, same thing. This Lightweight is not so much being clipped, it's just that you can clip off it. So with Lightweight, normally you'd hold it this entire duration. I don't need to do that. So it'll be lightweight, and then you just drop it and go into whips. And the same thing. So with Light Blast, Light Blast, you're not so much clipping the construct as that you're canceling it early just using uh, boxing. So the tap melee is boxing. So Light Blast, if I try to hit like Whip Thrash, nothing's going to happen until the entire Light Blast animation finishes. But the same thing with Dervish, I don't need to hold that entire animation of, of uh, Light Blast. So what you do, I can cancel early with boxing. But like I said, I don't need to see that entire animation of boxing. So light, light blast, and so. So I'm, I'm canceling it with boxing and going straight into whip thrash. So light blast, cancel it. So that's the that's concept of, of construct clipping. Uh, you'll see it again. In, so if I, for example, in my one-handed one, just so I don't have to cover it when I touch on single target. So if we do uh, grasping hand and hand clap, uh, grasping hand. So grasping hand. As you can see, if I tap range, it's it's going to do another hand clap. But that last hand clap, I don't have to hold. So hand clap, hand clap, hand clap, hand clap. And the same thing, grasping hand. If I do the hold melee, it's going to do grasping hand pull. So if I do hold melee, all the way back to set up the dot. So what you do is hand clap, and then on the last one, you clip it. Same thing with grasping hand pull. Pull it back slightly, you can you can clip it. Grasping hand, pull it back slightly, go into light blast. I'm not, sorry, uh, hand clap. So that last hand clap is always being clipped. And I'm not doing the full pull animation. So, I mean, that's that's the concept behind contract clipping. It applies for pretty much every single one. You just have to watch whatever whatever contract combo you see here can be clipped with a power move. And that's all you're doing. So, let's get into the actual rotation here. And I hope you understand that. I think I covered it in my last guide as, guide as well. I did like a whole section on, on, on clipping with light. I mean, it's clipping. It's the same thing in general. It just works a slightly different with hard light because of the constructs. Uh, it works similar with like Celestial too. Any, any power that has constructs, uh, Celestial is along the same way. So, you basically, you don't have to see that second Celestial combo. You can clip it right away and go into another power Celestial combo. So let's touch on the rotation here and you'll see what actually looks like in action.
Okay, that gives you a good understanding of the loadout there. Went on for a little longer. I uh, had a couple hiccups on the dervish clip. I just tapped melee too quickly. It's it's easy enough to do when you're doing when when uh, with thrash lightweight as a tap melee as well. But I mean, you can see the difference in the parsers because you should be around uh, between like 164 to 167, 66 hits. So when you miss dervish, uh, it's you know you're jumping down to like 148. So easily you're missing uh, those uh, like 15 to 20 ticks. So you can tell right away in the in the parse. Not only is it going to be barely over mill because everything else should be like around 1.2. Um, but oh, I forgot to show my stats. Um, I'm at 88.3k might. I have to do that because I have to stay under the dom cap. So I can't wear the OP head, which would be another 400 might. Because if I do that, if I go for the sparring targets, they go flying. Uh, it makes it impossible to parse. Uh, that's a quality of life issue with the game right now. So have to do that. Uh, it's also even even if I put uh, like I've, if I did the base item trick with the sparring target, it's still awkward with lightweight because it pushes them aside. Then I'm missing a uh, target with light blast, so it's just it's a lot easier just to put on like a, to grab like an elite head from the vendor and just and parse with that. So I'm missing some stats, but uh, as you can see there. Uh, hard light melee is among the top of the game. It can compete with gadgets, earth, uh, anything, uh, rage. So, you know, that's 1.2 mil con almost pretty much consistently in, in throughout parsing. And that's missing 400 might from that. That's missing like a cookie. It's missing the, like the crit buff consumable. It's, it's missing uh, like a nitro or whatever, a tetra buff from a troller. So, I mean, just think of all. Uh, so basically, if I'm running a buff troll build, I have another, I'm missing 17,000 might compared to that. So that turns that into some really consistent numbers. Uh, and it's not entirely dead melee. Like Whip Thrash is technically mid range, so you'll still hit ads if the tank is pulling them, and obviously uh, Light Blast is range. So the only ones you have to really watch are like Dervish and Lightweight. Uh, so it, it uh, does give a little bit of flexibility to the melee rotation if you have to chase ads at all. But Whip Thrash, you can still chase. That's not an issue. And then you can lunge in with Dervish. Even after Lightweight, or sorry, Light Blast, you can still like lunge in with uh, Boxing if you had to. But uh, that's the, the melee rotation there. So let's get to the next one. So that's the rotation there without Dervish. I mean, technically you could run in Trap too. Uh, it works just the same. It's a little bit higher power cost. Damage is similar. The only thing is if you are like lower, like in solos or duos or lower contents at all, the problem with Entrap is that if the ads are zero willpower, uh, Entrap's going to case them and then obviously send them flying. So that's what you don't want. Um, I think in my previous guide I showed in trap and, and just it's it just becomes an issue just in there's there's plenty of content with zero power ads and you, you don't want to be messing around with this and then like your whip thrash sends them flying it's just it's just not uh, it's gonna be messy so you might as well use Sonic Cry sets up days as well so say for whatever reason if you don't have like a grim that's leveled uh, like say your grim's like 120 it's not like you need your grim at 160 uh, or above to be AOE. 
So say if it's at 120 or something like that, you can still use it on a single target, but then at least you have Sonic Cry to set up the Days PI. So, I mean, that's just the, the option as well. So you saw the damage. It's still okay. It's You're still over a million, like between a million and 1.1. It's just that you're not going to have any of those like high spikes into like the twos, threes, and fours uh, because of the uh, obviously less crits from Dervish. So your, your hit count is in, uh, what was your hit count? Around like, 100, like 150, 162 in that case, but it's usually around 150, mid low 150s. So in uh, one of the larger parts with Dervish, you're sitting at around like 165, 166. So you're missing that 15 hits of damage on, on Dervish and the possible crits, possible strategies, could procs, stuff like that. So uh, that's the issue there. But, I mean, you're still doing plenty of well enough damage uh, with Sonic Cry, and it's completely feasible because that's iconic power. So, and once again, it's not that you rely on super speed, like say like gadgets or another power where you have to be super speed to do a competitive damage. Uh, you can still do competitive damage with like Entrap or with Sonic Cry, or whatever you want. If you if you're doing like a immersive cosplay guilt build, you could use Entrap. But uh, once again, you just have to watch out for the issue of the balling the ads. So let's get to the next rotation here. Okay, so with respect to a single target loadout for light, once again, nothing's really changed to my previous guide except uh, you're running heat vision now and you have light blast uh, as a buffed AoE move. So with heat vision, I'm not running solar amplifier as an artifact. Heat vision is just to set up the regular burning dot because if you use heat vision, even if you clip off heat vision in like half a second, it's still going to apply the burning dot. And that burning dot is also going to help the strategy card procs. And then the first couple of ticks of heat vision are act if they crit, they're actually really nice as well for single target damage. So that's all you're doing there. And light blast is really just AOE. So say you have a boss like Mordru in, in Trigon. So the whole fight is really single target, except there's some ads that come out at the end. Well then with light blast, at least you can hit light blast. You have the uh, AOE from light blast and then into minigun. So say for example, in that fight, when you're doing single target rotation and some ads come out, um, grasping and hand clap are purely single target, same with heat vision. So it allows you to hit light blasts and then go into minigun, and then you have that extra AOE damage. So you can you can still hand clap, and you can still do grasping and pull. But then when the ads come out, at least you can get some extra AOE damage and go back into and clip it there. So that that's the concept of why you have um, light blast on that rotation is just if you need some AOE additions. So that's, uh, that's why light is really flexible in terms of its powers, in terms of its loadup, because, I mean, really the bare bones light single target is two powers. I mean, you could just take a grasping hand and hand clap repeatedly for the entire fight and still do really good damage because of how powerful those two moves are with those constructs. Uh, and then we just round it up by heat, uh, sorry, round up by robot sidekick and Neo Venom boost. The, the supercharges for light are really super lackluster. Ballistic Assault uh, is a channel. It cannot be clipped. So, I mean, that's pointless. Uh, and Strafing Run is, is a 10,000 supercharge. That's fairly weak for a 10k. And it's a 20 second dot. So even if you're running Gemini, uh, you're running a, your back-ended damage is, tw is a, a 20 second dot, which is really long. So Neo Venom Boost, with how much damage you're getting in that short duration, uh, Neo Venom Boost is miles above any other supercharge for light because that's just flat damage boost. So, let's touch on the rotation here.
Hey, same thing. You guys get the gist of the rotation there. Um, the only thing that changed this rotation slightly, you're much better off having a rifle instead of uh, brawling around your weapon. Uh, the rifle tap on single target is pretty much the highest single target tap damage you can get. I think there might be another couple weapons out there, but it's it's like top three in terms of the rifle tap. Uh, I don't have a rifle, I just have brawling. So it, it technically, if you want to increase your damage a bit, just by basically how you're... you're you know, preloading the damage there, and then uh, preloading before you get into heat vision. Didn't do that right. So, you can get your blast adapter proc, and then you can get your rifle tap damage as well. Let's cancel psychic from attacking. But uh, that'd be the only thing that would increase that damage a bit. But as you can see, you really, really don't have to do that much as well. 66, 57, 62, 61, 69, 68. I uh, got really lucky there. Uh, that's a 84, 84k parse. Uh, base damage, 56, 65, 70. Uh, so that's, you're looking at the top tier single target, already along with gadgets and celestial, and um, that's unbuffed. You know, you, you once again, you're in a raid with like a Nitro, a Mega, uh, the uh, Tetra buff from a controller giving you 17,000 might. Uh, cookie, uh, the crit consumable, you know, whatever whatever buff you want to take in, in terms of uh, like whatever sodas and stuff you want to take, you're um, pretty much, <laughs> you know, at the, at the top end of the spectrum for single target. Uh, light's always been like that. It is very power intensive. And like I said before, uh, you, you're not using light blast. You're only saying using light blast in a situation where there'd be ads. So, for example, say some ads came out like Ender Mordru, you'd be hand clap, grasping hand, and just basically go into light blast, minigun, and then go back wrecking. So it's kind of awkward because I'm, I'm pulling the ads. Light blast, you know, minigun, and then right back in hand clap. So pull, light blast, minigun, and you're, you're right in there. So. That, that's essentially what you have to do if you're mixing single target and AoE. All you're doing is light blast into minigun and then going right back into hand clap. So that's that's your AoE move just in case you have that in a situation. But for pure single target, you're just using hand clap, grasping hand, and, and heat vision. And then you can get some you know pretty amazing results. So if I was if I was parsing here for you guys, max buff, like you know, nitro, mega, and the quick consumable. Then you're pretty much looking at you know 80, 90s, uh, even up to a million on high par on high crits. So, there's a single target for you. Let's get into the next rotation. So in terms of a range loadout for light, it's a tad bit awkward from the fact that really uh, you you just need two powers. So all light. Uh, ranged AoE is just light blast minigun. Only these two powers. That's it. Nothing else. Well, I mean, technically we're about psychic. Um, so you, you think you're using a loadout, uh, brand new loadout armory just for two powers. It's kind of a bit awkward. Um, you can get away, like on say on the single target build with grasping hand. Grasping hand goes into light blast, and then you could, uh, and then basically light blast into minigun. So you can get away with it, like just like I was showing previously on the single target armory. You can get away with an AoE ranged. Uh, load out with that single target armory. Uh, it's it's obviously not going to be the highest AOE damage because you you don't have uh, light blast and, and the power mini gun. That's really the only thing you're missing. And then technically, if you can mid range, then you can do just ram with thrash repeatedly. So it, it's one of those things where this is a little bit awkward because grasping hands is useless. You're not going to use it. You might as well like use a second supercharge or something if you want. Uh, take like speed drain or bloom or something like that. But even then, using a supercharger range isn't that good. But uh, it's just there. Grasping hands, basically, just like a filler, just in case you need some single target, or if you want to put hand clap on. But uh, that's that's essentially it. You could you could do chompers or spike quake if you need like a day's pi setup. Uh, but that's that's essentially it. There, there's you're not using grasping hand in the rotation. It's, it's just going to be robot psychic. Uh, basically, ram with thrash is there just in case you get into mid range. You can do uh, a bit higher damage. But the main AOE damage is just from light blast and minigun, uh, base or minigun in general. So, the, the more time you're in minigun, the better ranged AOE damage you're going to have uh, from light. So, it's uh, I'll show you in the rotation so you can understand. But just be knowing that it, it's a little bit awkward because usually 
you want the least amount of armories as you can. Obviously, you have to have a melee armory that's completely separate. You might have a control armory that's two, and the three you have a single target armory. So you may not always have four armories. If you have a fourth one, that's great. You just do uh, either like a you could do battle troll or, or a ranged AOE. Or if you don't want to melee damage at all, then you could just stick ranged AOE. But you really just need these two powers. But it's a little bit awkward because you can't fit power minigun on another rotation unless you want to take off like sidekick. Uh, but at least the single target armory has grasping hand, and then you just go grasping hand into light blast, and then light blast into a uh, minigun. So that's that's what you do there for a little bit less damage. So let's show you the rotation at least. Okay, so you get the, just the rotation there. Really, there's no like hidden contract. The only contract that you're not seeing really is off minigun. Sorry, off minigun, you tap range to get ram, and then basically go straight back into light blast. Uh, and then light blast, you're just holding it until you get the minigun. So basically, light blast, hold range to get the minigun, and then tap minigun, and then now you would see ram, but I'm clipping that ram with light blast. So that's the really only the contract that you're not seeing there. Uh, but uh, that's that's essentially it. It's really just uh, uh, two powers, mini light blast, mini gun, and like I was saying before, I mean technically you could do like grasping hand in, into light blast and then mini gun, and then just kind of like repeat. Or if you if you that's if you only have grasping hand in your rotation, but I say if you got grasping hand and light blast, you could do uh, grasping hand into light blast into mini gun. And then into power light blast into minigun. Yeah. And then just repeat that in the minigun. Hit light blast power in the minigun. So it's it's similar damage. It's still gonna be lower than using those two abilities without power minigun, but I mean it's a, basically it's a substitution. So if you're in that say if I switched my single target armory, I already have grasping hand and light blast. So like I said before, if you need to go pure AOE, then it's just going to be, you know, light blast, in the minigun, in the power light blast, in the minigun, and you're just repeating off that. So that's, that's essentially it. It just depends on how many armories you have, how much flexibility you want. But if you want pure range, like I said before, there is another one here you could do as well. Uh, it's not ranged. It's going to be um, mid-range. So basically, it's just going to be uh, brand whips.
And that's about what you're going to see for mid-range rotation. I mean, is all of this is just ram whips. Uh, that's on on three targets. It's a little bit too spread out to make it make sense here. I, could, I guess he could be right in the middle here, but you're not going to um, get the same damage spread because ads won't be that spread of heart. But I mean, that's all you do. I mean, the only reason I've ran on your rotation, say, if you didn't want to range max range AOE, or if you didn't want to melee and you wanted to go like a like a ranged AOE, but then if you could get close to ads, you could do just put ram on there. But that's all it is. I mean, it just ram whips. That's over and over again. Um, it still does okay, but the uh, light blast and power minigun is much better from a pure ranged AOE aspect. Okay, so for the controller spec for light, once again, similar to my gadgets guide, uh, going forward I will be covering a buff troll spec for light and, and for control power sets in general. I believe that's where the meta is kind of shifting for controllers at this moment. Power controllers aren't as required, and that's just not for just league runs, that's for pugs in general. It's just that power sets, especially might, are so power efficient. They're using long channels and hardly using any power. Prec is starting to make a comeback, and Prec uses no power as well. So it's just, you, you know, you've got healer power sets with like purple healing ray where they generate 20 percent return for their own power tanks are really power efficient so it's just that power trollers in a lot of sense are overkill where buff trollers are incredibly important um like for example like when i'm buff trolling i'll give another 16 if i'm fully buffed in, in a raid uh, i'll give another 16 to 17 thousand might to the dps and if I was running a COG, I'm not sure what the, the precision conversion is because I, I just run Tetra. But, you know, imagine DPSing a raid and having another 16,000 might. Uh, that's a lot more helpful than just having power that you're not going to use. Uh, so if you want to know a power... Uh, I mean, literally the only difference between a, a buff troll spec and a power troll spec is the artifacts and the fact that instead of specking might, you're specking might and power. I mean, that's the only difference. You're still specking bit in a buff troll spec. Uh, so the only reason you don't put 255 here, you put 285 here. That's the only difference. And the artifacts, which I'll touch on. But I mean, there are so many videos on my channel that cover power controlling. So if you want to take that route, then you're, you know, you're certainly uh, capable of doing it and searching it. Uh, even my previous light guide is power trolling. So let's get into the buff troll spec. Once again, same type of gear. You're still running controller gear. So replenishing adapter. Uh, obviously, you switch your head mod to group shielding. And your neck mod. I just, I'm just running the elite neck mod because I don't have a, a elite um, troll one. But since you're running claw, it's not necess uh, necessarily required that you run it. So as a buff troll, I would run escalating might because you're not running. Uh, you're not hitting recharge consecutively. So escalating procs is not going to really help. On that, the main point is the artifacts and then just the trinket there. So artifacts for buff trolling is always going to be claw. Now, it's something that um, you have to have it. So once again, buff trolling is certainly the more expensive approach to, to controlling. Uh, the claw has to be 160 or 200. You cannot have claw on a raid less than 160 because it's not going to give the, the uh, weapon. Sorry, it's not going to give the buff or power pot power time to uh, eight group members is only going to give it to four so it has to be 160 or 200 uh, and then you've got the amulet of Ra, which is your typical uh, controlling debuff artifact which you're going to have regardless of any kind of if you're battle trolling buff trolling power trolling it's always going to be amulet of Rao. and then in the buff troll spec i have tetra you can run cog as well but so it's basically if you're buffing might players it's, it's tetra if you're buffing precision players it's cog so that's the substitution if you're running a power troll spec uh, you would have like Scrap of Soul Cloak instead of Tetra, and then you would have a Parasite Power Harness instead of Claw. That's the only difference. Parasite Power Harness and Scrap of Soul Cloak. I mean, there's still other builds with like the gimmicky niche ones with like, uh, what's that, Bop Comlink and stuff like that, but uh, I mean, that's absolutely not necessary. And then a buff troll artifact, you would have like the anivert, um, the uh, Servo Bots or 5%. I think that's the, uh, the other one figure what it's called but there, there's three ones that are, that are five percent health and then heartthrob which is a downtown seasonal and as well you could run uh, the new venom uh sorry not new venom the omac trinket the omac trinket gives uh 125 percent buff health so that's that's not necessary it's to get your max health it is but it's not necessary that's a bit overkill you're perfectly fine just running this and the affinity mod bonuses i kept might because i'm primarily dps but uh if you're going to peer buff troll then you obviously spec healthier instead uh, and the chest mod, your power efficiency, you would, in case, run hardy. 
So if you're if you pre-buff troll, I would run Hardy. Sometimes light can be a little bit power intensive for controlling as well. You may run power efficiency, but if you want to keep uh, what you should be running, it's going to be a uh, Hardy. So make sure you run this. It's five percent health. So if you want to go like a pure buff troll spec, that's what you want to run. Light can be a little bit power intensive sometimes for the DPS side and controlling. So that's the issue there. So in terms of a loadout, we're looking at Lightweight Strike, that's going to be your attack debuff and the supercharge generator, so you can run that regardless. Recharges your instant power. Light Blast is the primary defense debuff. Snap Trap is going to be the healing debuff. Light Barrier is your shield and Group Shielding your supercharge. So with Light Blast, um, if you hold it, that's your only stun. So actually, that's, uh, let's just jump down to the, the war room here. So the other reason why light can be a little bit um, wonky a bit because it's it's lacking a bit on uh, stun. So light blast is your main stun. Everything's going to be stunned while you're in light blast. But the issue is that if you clip off light blast or cancel it, the stun stops. So if I, you know, stop off this, they're still stunned, but they're going to break out as soon as I stop the channel of light blast. Uh, so that's the downside. You're, if you're holding in light blast, you, it's not as bad in a buff troll spec because you're not constantly hitting a recharge. If you're in a power troll spec, you're missing so much power by, by not clipping a recharge and going in your debuffs. So that's why a buff troll spec can get away with that more often if you need to stun, if the, if the tank isn't stunning. Because, uh, uh, and then the other one, what's the uh, rotation here? So you can also do snap tap into light blast so it's a hold range. So if I do snap trap, and then hold ranged, I'm going into Light Blast again. So it's not going to apply the debuff, but I do get that stun. So if, if the tank is kind of struggling with ads, I hit Light Blast, I cancel off it, hit Recharge, and the ads are still aren't stunned, I can hit Snap Trap, hold range. Oh, sorry, I didn't do it in time. And then stun them again. So that, that's the advantage there, running Snap Trap as the heal debuff instead of in Trap, is that I have access to Light Blast again just in case I need to do that. So normally, if you want to cancel a little bit faster, light blast, and then clip off it, and you can hit recharge. So you can't clip it like, say, if, uh, if you want to clip it normally like you would, hand blast rotation, you clip to recharge. Light blast, you can't do that because it's a channel. But you can cancel off it, you know, just in a second. So light blast, cancel, recharge, and really doesn't cost you any time, but they still have the, applies the debuff. So other than that, your rotation is going to be the same. Light blast, clip the recharge, then you're just doing snap trap. You know, into light blast if you have to or clip off it that's essentially it so really controlling nothing has changed it's just that what's changed is how you spec um so instead of specking you know purely into it purely into might and power you're specking into health because you're you're uh, the higher health the higher buff you give to the, the other dps so that's really the only thing that changes just how you spec how you spec your artifacts rather than um loadout loadout rotation stays the exact same that has never changed and won't change for buff trolling or, or power trolling the rotation laid out is the same the only thing that changes is just how you spec so that's it <laughs>